Yeah, if there is any center people have come, please uh, raise your hand. So, we can start before we wait for others to come. Okay, there is somebody here is, uh, hello Mount Zion College. Sir, our uh, title is Impact of Colors on 5th Sense and 6th Sense. Yeah, so what we will do is we will uh, not discuss the other, uh, are you talking a particular paper or the same paper which I shared? On the same paper, sir, which, which we downloaded. Okay, okay, good enough. Okay, so the uh, topic, so you are telling the topic, okay. The title is Impact of Colors on 5th Sense and 6th Sense. Okay. So, our question is, uh, which law is used for the human and non-human animal discriminate? See, which law is used, it is, uh, it is not the question that has been answered in the paper. It is not, the, when, I, when we mean by question, it is not the question, any question on the subject. The question is, what is the research question that the people have addressed? What is the research question that okay. has been addressed in the paper for which they have uh -huh. found an answer? Okay. So, whatever they are saying, Weber law or those things are part of the literature, but that is not the research okay. question that is being addressed. Okay. So, just think about it while we will go to okay. the other college. This is uh, Mufakham Ja College of Engineering. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. The topic question and uh, significance is the authors have studied about the visual arrays because they wanted to find out about schematic congregity which helps in uh, understanding the uh, effect of congregity in non-linguistic and linguistic animals. Okay, so reasonably okay, but I still have uh, some concerns there. So, the question, what is the question that is being addressed? Yeah, what is the effect of uh, impact of the colors in selection of uh, based upon the number of elements. So, your the question is what is the impact of colors? Okay. So, let us go yeah. to… Uh, visual error. Okay. Number of… based upon the number of uh, elements. All right. So, um, I, we will discuss uh, later. We will go to another college. Prasad Engineering okay. College. Sir, by using citation based method, how can you relate one article with the other one? Can you give me one example? Okay. Now, do you mind uh, writing this question down? We Can we take it up? Uh, okay, maybe I will spend another 5 minutes taking general questions as well, but after that we need to get back to this topic. So, let me just open document. So, for the benefit of others, I will just restate your question. Your question was, how do you use citation to obtain other articles. Is that correct? Can you restate it once more? Sir, we have uh, discussed about the citation based method in that how can we relate one article with the other? Okay. I will just restate. So, how can you relate one article to other based on citation? So, what is a citation? Citation is, suppose in, an, in a journal article you use some other article and you say that somebody has done this, they have not done this. Okay. So, that article becomes your, it is related to your article in some way. Something that you did and something that they did, there is a commonality. So, that is why it is useful to see this whole uh, citation and literature as this diagram. It is like a family diagram. So, there are parents, there are children and there are cousins. So, if you take a look at this article, this article has got three articles which have cited the red article. So, the red article has done some work and that article has been used by these three articles. So, which means that these, these three articles okay. are like a children to this article. But this article itself has used several other articles which was published before this article. So, that means they are like a parent. Okay. 
multiple parent. So then this defines the relationship between articles. Now okay. once you have this relationship, okay. you can find out who are the cousins, first cousin, second cousin and so on. So in some sense, all these articles are related. So when you do a citation based search, for example, Scopus or Google or um, ISI allow you to do a citation based search in which you can list all the citations of this article. Suppose you have this article in hand, you can find out, ask a question, who are the other papers who have cited this article? So then you will get all these articles. Then even without doing a keyword search, you know that they are related. Somebody else has done this uh, research for you and found the relationship between the articles. So just by using a citation search, you can find all the related articles in a given area. Okay, does that answer your question? Around 100 articles, then is it the same procedure for that also? No, uh, we are talking, so how did you get that 100 articles to begin with? We are talking about, now the, these 100 art articles have come from some kind of search. That search might be a keyword search or it might be a citation based search. So in that 100 articles, you have already got by some search. It is not that after you got 100 articles, you are doing a citation based search. Okay, did it answer your question? Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we will move on to uh, SIES Graduate School of Technology. Uh, the question is, uh, do non-linguistic animals resemble humans in quantitative decisions? Quantitative decisions, okay. So what is the topic? Uh, similarity, non-linguistic animals like monkeys uh, show semantic congruency, uh, congruity with humans. Uh, what was the topic? So when you say topic, question and significance, what is the topic of research? Broad topic, you should not tell uh, semantic congruence as a topic, nobody will understand what it is. So what is a broad topic? The evolution of uh, humans from monkeys. That is not broad topic, anyway, so what is the significance of? Uh, similarity in logical thinking of uh, non-linguistic animals with humans. Uh, so when I ask similarity, it is like answering a question, uh, what is the importance of what you did? So let us assume that you have done this work, okay, and you are going and meeting uh, say the, um, your director of your college or your principal of your college who is not working in your area. So he, he or she will not understand all this semantic congruity and all those technical terms. So now when you go to that person, she asks you what is the importance of all these things, why do all these things, why should I have my faculty do all these things, what will you tell them? So that is what this is, going to is be significance. Yes. This is going to be the basis uh, to confirm that humans have evolved from monkeys. So what? So the question, if somebody asks so what and if you try to find an answer to it, that will actually by itself give you the significance. So you keep asking yourself, I am addressing everybody here, how do you find what is the significance of a topic? You simply ask, keep asking a question so what and so what till you come to a very simple statement of the significance. You can of course state broadly ma monkeys relation to uh, evolution whatever, but then I will ask so what, why should I study that? So you keep asking the question so what and so what, you will find it. So let us go to some other institute and ask so what questions, Silicon Institute of Technology. Uh, yes, I had another question, but uh, sort of unrelated. Can I ask a question about the scientific method or do we have to stick to this topic? You may, may I just said maybe for 5-10 minutes we can take uh, general quick. questions. Okay. Jaydeep, is it? Very quick question. Yes, Jaydeep. Hi, Hello, how are you? Sir. How are you? Uh, uh, a very quick question. The scientific method, um, the predictive aspect of it, should it come from uh, the hypothesis or once we test the hypothesis it becomes a theory, then 
the predictive aspect of it comes. The question is the predictive aspect of a hypothesis, does it come after you have tested the hypothesis or is it part of the process? See, uh, I think uh, it is just a interpretation of what you call by predictive. The predictive thing that we are saying in the scientific methodology is first of all something that even so you are having an explanation of something and if that explanation is true you need something else to be true and you do go and do that test if that something else is true that test that you are doing then you have little more confidence that ok my hypothesis does not only explain observation 1 but it also explains observation 2 then somebody else comes ok it should also explain observation 3. So then you, you get more confidence in your hypothesis so your hypothesis now has explained three different observations. So this happens throughout the history of evolution of that theory and then initially something what you call as a theory becomes a model and then it becomes a detailed theory and you accept it. So this right. process is an <laughs> overall process. Now after say 20 years it might have a predictive power to do something else that is the predictive power that you are telling but within the scope of scientific methodology the word prediction is essentially finding out an observation which is not yet been found out that is observation 1 has been found for which you have found out an hypothesis now you are looking for observation 2 which can also be explained by hypothesis observation 3 observation 4 so this observation 2 3 and 4 are also called as predictions so anything that has not been seen before or explained before by this hypothesis is called as a prediction okay does it explain because i thought that the hypothesis was uh, mostly an educated guess then we test the educated guess based on experiments and if if the tests go through then it comes to the theory stage and the theory has the predictive ability more no. so than the hypothesis having the predictive you're ability. correct but what is the is test correct? you're correct but what is the test the test is on some observation and right that observation is what you are saying is prediction that is if this hypothesis is true then that observation should also occur and let me go and do that right. test. So that is what is called as a prediction of the uh, hypothesis which has not been observed so far ok it explains observation A now it is going to observation B. The, what you call yes, as a okay. theory in that sense is essentially part of the hypothesis when you say hypothesis in in physical sciences a hypothesis would be a set of equations you use a equation and from that equation you derive uh, certain uh, conditions you put some boundary conditions you solve the differential equation you put it into a computer solve it correct and that will give you a prediction and if that is observed then it matches so then your theory your hypothesis is right okay yes correct okay thank you very much Sundar. thank you let's go to the next uh, college maulana azad hello good afternoon sir good afternoon uh, sir i would like to state it in tqs format yes please the authors have studied the topic semantic congruity affects numerical judgments Similarly, in monkeys and humans, because they wanted to find out whether monkeys are able to understand the meaning of words or images as the human does, which could be to find out the effects of the color similar on monkeys and humans or not. Um, your significance is not very clear. And the topic, it is suggested that you do not use exact title that has been given. So the reason you want to state it like this is for example is a situation we will again encounter after two days it is what is we, we have also called as an elevator pitch. 
you need to be able to state what you are doing. Suppose you are you meet your uh, college principal somewhere uh, down the corridor. He she is walking with you, and she asks you what you are doing, or the college uh, vice chancellor comes down. So you hardly have a couple of minutes to tell. So in that couple of minutes, if you are going to use a lot of such uh, technical words, which of course you definitely understand, but a person other than somebody working in your area may not understand. So at least for the topic, try not to use uh, very technical words. So try to use simple words that uh, people can uh, understand. Okay, so let's give a chance to okay. uh, next college online. Thank you very much. Uh, PSG College of Technology. PSG College, over to you. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, the question we have written is uh, the topic is a study on the numerical judgment of human and monkeys. And the uh, Question is to find out whether the human and monkeys are able to identify and associate similarly. Is this right, sir? Okay, what is the significance? So let us assume that you have done this work and I am asking you what is the significance of your work? Maybe to prove the Darwin's theory that we are from monkeys. Does it prove? I think so, sir. Hmm? Uh, not prove, it is just another. Okay, so. Uh, which is okay. Let me just take one last uh, uh, answer from uh, Nite Meenakshi Institute. Okay, uh, regarding this uh, questions and uh, answers, uh, sometimes the higher authorities will discuss in directors or principals like that. So, because they are also from the technical side only, why can't we have, I mean, uh, technicality things in the uh, presentations? Uh, let me restate your question. The question is, uh, when you talk to your, say, principal, um, vice chancellor or director who are also technical, what I said was, they might be of a different area. I am not saying that you use uh, plain English, I am not saying plain English, but you use simple scientific language. It is, see, semantic congruity, how many of us understand in this whole class? It is little difficult unless you go and look up and find out what it is. Do not use semantic congruity. Semantic congruity is a too specific a title to use for an area. That is my point. You use something which say a, somebody who has passed a high school in science or a graduate in science can understand. But do not use a term which only PhD in that particular area can understand. That is my point. So when you say technical, it is technical with respect to somebody who is a graduate in science or high school science, not PhD in science. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. All right. So I have just split this into question and answer. Okay. The topic I would say is broadly in the area of cognition. So cognition is a word like most of us understand. It is with respect to how people understand, right? It is so cognition is a word which most people in science with basic science will understand. So the words I have chosen is a cognition in primates. Okay, so pr uh, mostly primates are supposed to have the highest cognition. So the broad area. Now let us say you you are you are meeting a principal for the first time. The principal does not know what department you are. Okay. Forget your uh, area of work. He does not even know you are from electrical or humanities or uh, computer science or chemistry, nothing. To that person, if you just go and say, I am working on uh, semantic congruence, they will not understand. But try to use a simple term like, I am working on cognition in primates. Primates, everybody understands. Cognition also people understand. So what are you working on? What is your area of work? Cognition in primates. Okay. So, 
the place where I, I took this Q is from the department of that author. So, the author belongs to a department called as cognitive neurobiology. Okay, the department or the division where the author is uh, doing their research is cognitive microbiology. So, that gives a broad area, correct. So, now when I say I am working in cognition in primates, that broadly tells, okay, you are working in understanding how a mind processes information and reacts to it. So, that is the topic. Now, the question is if you notice is clearly stated in the, the last line of the introductory paragraph. I, I am, if you have a local copy, you can see it. I am not opening it here because it will change this view. The question is clearly stated there. Question is, humans are able to see numbers. I have a small set of fruits here. I have a large set of fruits here. If I ask you in which there is more fruits, you can easily tell. So, the basic question as somebody had pointed out, what is the law? That was not, that law basically says that when the ratio of these both numbers is large, I can easily find out the which is large and which is small. So, that is not the research question, that is something which has been addressed long back and it is solved. The question is, is it only humans that can differentiate small number from a large number? or other primates also can do it. So, that question if you notice it is clearly stated in the in the last line of the first paragraph. I will just read it out for you. Okay. The question is in this study we investigate whether monkeys show a response signature of an adult human being comparing judgments that is semantic congruity effect and later it they define what is the semantic congruity effect which is which is smaller okay which is bigger and so on okay so the basic question is whether monkeys also can have a sense of numbers so that is the basic research question and the answer should be whether it has has to be an answer simple like yes or no yes there is a similarity is the answer monkeys have. So, the question and answer should correspond to each other, the research question and the answer. Whether the monkeys have sense of proportion question mark, answer yes they have, no they do not. So, you have to always write these two sentences which relate to each other, one has to be a question that has to be a direct answer for that. Now, coming to reason, what is the meaning of reason? Reason, there is a difference between reason and evidence. When you come up with this hypothesis, remember I told you, you have a research question and then you have a hypothesis. How did you come from research question to hypothesis? Because you learnt something in the textbooks or something from the literature that led you to take a guess. Hypothesis is a guess. Unless it is proved, it is a guess. So, based on literature, you took the question and then you came up with the hypothesis after reading a literature. So, a reason comes from literature that is work that has already been done. From work that has already been done, you are taking, you are interpreting that work in a different direction and providing a possible answer. So, a reason is always something that comes from existing literature. Okay. Now, in this particular case, what is the reason? The reason is, why do I think that monkeys have similarity with humans, because there are some other evidence which shows that we have common origins. Humans have evolved from, possibly evolved from monkeys and we have common origins 
and therefore it is likely that monkeys also can look at the numbers just as humans do likely the answer could be very well no had they as the experiment had shown it is negative it would have been no answer is no okay so that is the reason reason comes from existing literature not what you have done but then you have to do something you have to do some experiment to show it and that becomes your evidence and in your evidence you carried out experiments with monkeys where their monkeys are able to identify numbers so if you show blue it identified the larger one if you showed red it showed the smaller one so although they are not they don't understand language they understand colors so instead of asking the monkey show me a larger uh, basket of bananas it doesn't understand language so they train the monkey to show that okay whenever i show red you have to show me the larger basket whenever i show blue you have to show me the smaller basket so once you are able to communicate the cue the cue in this case is color it is not the effect of color as some of you have pointed out color is simply something it's like a language i am saying show me the larger basket for the monkey it is red red color or blue color whatever it is okay so that is the evidence so this forms the question and answer of course there can be small variations to this but at least this broadly gives you an idea that you can present to most people of course there are certain things you cannot present to all technically minded people but at least the topic and significance should be made clear to a lame scientifically thinking person i'm saying lame because they need not be persons from your area they are lame in the sense they don't know things in your area but they have a minimum knowledge in science okay uh, i will take about 5 uh, minutes of questions if you have anybody wants to discuss on this so uh, we'll go on to the next uh, college coimbatore institute of engineering hello why do they prefer the blue color in choosing the large number so the color is nothing they just the been trained like that so i am saying large i am saying small okay you understand what the meaning of large is because you are linguistic for that uh, monkeys they have just trained blue means take the big bucket red means take the small bucket so that doesn't mean if they are trained with red is uh, large bucket they would have taken that's not important the uh, blue and uh, the color is basically to convey a message that's all because they are non linguistic they can't speak they can't uh, understand language so there is nothing uh, particular about that okay so the om institute of technology uh, good afternoon sir sir my question is what is the difference between ethics and human behavior uh, ethics and human behavior yes so we, sir we'll reserve your question for the next session but uh, yeah ethics is about quickly it's, it's about the right and wrong of behavior it's not a difference it is the right and wrong of a behavior which is what the society or a group of people consider as right behavior and what they consider as wrong behavior is ethics okay let's give one last chance to gandhi institute of technology Hello. you have a question from gandhi Hello. institute on your research paper it is written that monkey should identify the red color the print the screen background is red color and the blue color my question is hello yes what is your question is color will be identified by the monkey or not so as i said in a question before this is not about any one particular color it is just the question is the research question is very different it is not about the color the research question is can monkeys differentiate small number from a large number but how do you tell a monkey what is small pick up the small and large so they just trained it by telling that okay 
red mains pick up the small, maybe they trained it with some food or something like that. Somehow they trained it. I am not gone to this. See, that is, uh, so we are not actually discussing a whole of the paper. We do not need to do that at this stage. At this stage, we are just seeing what is the question, what is the answer. So, how they did it is a matter different. We will not go into that. It becomes too technical. We are just seeing from the introduction and the abstract, can we construct what they have done? This is important because when you write an introduction and an abstract, it should be clear what is it that you are seeking to find out and what is it that you found out. Maybe that comes in the conclusion, but that has to come just within these three, introduction, conclusion and abstract. Okay, so we will stop this session and go to the next session on ethics.